guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I wanted to do a video on fast fashion and the issues with it. Why are we so addicted to it? And to put it simply, capitalism. <laughs> capitalism completely profits off our insecurities and exploits us by saying that we are never enough. So we look for external satisfaction through materialistic things and we look for things that can instantly satisfy us. And so fast fashion is the most easy, readily available solution. I'm gonna leave one of my favorite Instagrammers names here. Her name's Anoni and she does a lot of IGTV videos and she does a couple of them on fast fashion. This kind of is what she said, but in my words, if you know what I mean. I'll leave her username down below as well so you can check those videos out. She kind of explores the idea that when we go somewhere, we are always surrounded by shops. We are constantly being told that we need to go into places and we need to buy things. That's how capitalism forces consumerism because all of these shops demand us to open our purses in some way. And only came up with such like a valid point that if all of those shops turned into stuff in kind of like a utopian way where we could actually do stuff that grows us like what if the top shop was like a pottery making store or like urban outfitters a piano course so imagine if all of these places turned into those places where we could grow ourselves instead of somewhere that forces us to shop. We don't have a choice. This is capitalism brainwashing us. We are constantly surrounded by advertisements. It's only amplified by social media. Like even when you're getting on the bus to go to work, anywhere like that, advertisement is everywhere. Your favorite Instagrammers are constantly promoting other businesses and these are often fast fashion companies. And so we are constantly being fed the idea that we need to buy from them. We are being constantly ushered into the jaws of consumerism. And then when we get to the shops, they have loud music, fast music. They're constantly changing the layout of the stores, changing the stocks. And so we think that things are, things are disappearing, that they're gonna go, that we have to buy them now. Everything is telling us that we need to buy fast fashion we need to look a certain way and we need it now. Before you buy fast fashion again, please bear in mind that fast fashion is an industry built on colonialism, racism, slave labour and overall exploitation that ruins and damages people's lives as well as the planet. So, 60% of all clothing produced ends up in incinerators or landfills within one year of it being made. 63% of textile fibres are derived from petrochemicals. Do you want that on you? As well, just to like make you aware, just between 2000 and 2014, clothing production doubled. Doubled. And it's 2020 now. So let's just imagine how bad it is now. On average, we wear clothing only seven times before we get rid of it, seven times. The fast fashion industry is the second largest polluting industry. It takes more than 700 gallons of water to make one t-shirt of conventional cotton, which to put that in perspective is the amount of water each person drinks over 2.5 years. One third of plastic pollution in the ocean is due to microfibers from synthetic clothing. So microfibers is like the tiny bits of plastic that to make up your clothing. Producing plastic based fibers for textiles uses around 342 million barrels of oil every year oil from fossil fuels. Do you see where I'm going with this? So now I've talked about that, let's talk about racism and slave labour within the fashion industry. For a bit of context, there is 74 million textile workers worldwide, 80% of these are women of colour, an estimated 2% of these workers earn living wage, meaning 98% of these workers don't earn living wage or above. Can you, I'm sorry, can you, can you do, 
let's just deep that just for a second. Also, on average, it takes a CEO of a fast fashion company, like a major one, over four days to earn what it takes one of these workers to earn over their whole life, their whole entire life. And if that doesn't already encapsulate why it's wrong and why it's so awful, I'll continue. In Bangladesh, many are forced to work 14 to 16 hour days, seven days a week. Workers face hazardous conditions that often lead to injuries and factory fires. Since 1990, more than 400 workers have died and several thousand more have been wounded in 50 major factory fires. That's a lot of people just to die because they can't raise the standards of these factories. Also, sexual harassment and discrimination is widespread. So with one in four women saying that they face some kind of abuse. Also, many women workers have reported that the right to maternity leave is not upheld by their employers. From the surface to the core, fast fashion is systematically racist and continually chooses to put profit over people. You can tell with a lot of these companies that there is no diversity in the company. This is what we see, but then on board level, this is asserted through a lack of diversity amongst CEOs and board members, and then silencing those that speak up against racism and discrimination. Especially at the moment with the Black Lives Matter movement, a lot of them are like posting like black squares showing solidarity. In reality, they've silenced so many of their employees and they've got rid of them when they've spoken up issues regarding race. So in reality, they are doing nothing but performative allyship. So we need to watch to see if their actions align with their words and whether they put their money where their mouth is. If their workers aren't being paid enough and are working in awful conditions, as well as the fact that they are people of colour, like black people who are suffering, they can't say that they stand with Black Lives Matter if they're refusing to acknowledge their own complicity in racism. We need to hold them accountable for that, like we need to make sure we are seeing what they are doing, so if they post a Black Lives Matter post, we need to make sure that they're not just saying that and it doesn't just start and finish there. I read a really great article in The Guardian that I'll leave below by Cal Kid and Leglise. It says that brands have created a production model that keeps garment workers poor and working in unsafe conditions to maximise their own profits. The buying practices of fast fashion include turning a blind eye and allowing forced and unpaid overtime. These practices have incentivized the erosion of garment worker rights by manufacturers and the government. So what that's kind of saying is, when you buy from a fast fashion company, you are also being complicit and turning a blind eye to what they're doing. We vote with our money. My purse, I vote with it who I give it to. And so you are continually supporting these companies who aren't at all fair, who are exploiting people on a daily basis, you're doing that when you buy from these companies. Another big issue is to do with prison workers, aka slave work. In this, the minimum wage can be £4 a week and the maximum £10 a week in the UK, but in the US the minimum is 23 cents an hour and the maximum is $1.15. Most inmates do physical work. I also read an article on this from an inmate and that's also in The Guardian, I believe. But yeah, I've linked it down below as well, so you can check that out. Some companies that use prison workers are Victoria's Secret, Starbucks and Nintendo, just to name a few. Despite all of this seemingly inexorable information, we can do something to try and change things. We need to amplify black voices, specifically black trans women's voices, because they have the hardest time within this industry and in everything because they are the most marginalized. And until we recognize them 
and amplify their voice, until that happens, nothing else is gonna improve. We need to put pressure on them by stopping voting with them with our wallets, stop funding them, boycott them, until they can answer for all of the damage they do to people's lives and to the environment. You can also join the pay up movement and only buy from ethical brands that are transparent about their business. You can also sign petitions and donate as well where you can. So the kind of issue with me talking about all of this is that I come from an extreme place of privilege, meaning that I have the money, I have the time, I have the resources to choose not to participate in the fast fashion industry. Charity shops and places that resell things, they just don't fit a wide variety of body types and sizes. So that's the kind of issue because it's not accessible to cut out fast fashion for everyone. For example, if you don't have that much money, it's difficult because the fast fashion industry and society were both not set up in order to be sustainable. They were set up for profits. So that's why it's kind of hard to navigate topics like this. But if you know that you can, you should. It's also not about being perfect because if you have the idea in your head that you have to be perfect, that you have to cut out fashion, completely cut it off, you're never gonna wanna do that. You need to start small and then get better. So the only way we can do this is to just, just try it, you know? Because it's not about everyone doing the absolute most and the absolute perfection. It's about the people who can doing all they can and continuing to get better and then the industries will change and it will become more accessible. At this point, everything is political and so everything you do impacts something else. By buying fast fashion, you are complicit in all of the crap I talked about. You are contributing to that. So if it's accessible for you to cut fast fashion out, I would really, really try and get you to. Some really amazing sustainable places are Change, which wear this t-shirt's from, I love them, as well as Tala, which is a fitness brand and it's amazing. And I, oh, it's just stunning, stunning clothing. There's tons out there though, so like you can definitely find more. As well as like Depop, eBay, doing clothes swaps with your friends, charity shops. Charity shops are so great. I'm giving something back, but I'm getting something. And through doing all of this, you are saving clothes from going to landfill. So next time, maybe please do a bit of research into the company you are buying from. Also question the price, because even though we can associate low prices with goodness, it also probably means that it's not ethically sourced and it's not ethically made. I was thinking, if you saved all of that money, you'd probably spend on like getting like a few cheap clothes. You could save that and get something maybe a little bit more expensive. It might be more ethical. So it could be worth looking at it in that way. Also a more personal checklist. Like if you are gonna buy from fast fashion companies, cause you don't have to be perfect all the time. Like you can buy from them. If you do, maybe some questions to ask before you buy them, I'll leave a template here as well. How many times will I wear this? Do I already have clothes and accessories that will go with it? Do I have multiple occasions and places to wear this where I will want to wear it over anything else? Can I style it in different ways so I don't feel embarrassed kind of wearing the same thing? Even though I shouldn't because that's just a byproduct of capitalism. Will this fit and suit me perfectly? Is this piece timeless? Does it work in more than one season? Can you wear it over different years? Do I need this now? Like right now? Or shall I put it on a list? Like maybe in a few months I can still decide if I want it or not. Do you need it? Like, do you need it? Just wondering, just a question. But yes, that will conclude the video. Thank you very much for watching me rant about a very important topic and I will see you for my next video. Bye!